In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on Tactics. Chaplain's Report today does come from the Psalms, and, and I love the Psalms. Of course, it's important to remember that each of the Psalms are actually written poetically and done in such a way that they can be sung. So it's important to remember that this is a, a song that was intended to be sung as a praise toward God, because I think putting it in that context actually helps us understand some of the significance of the words chosen in this. So we're going to look at the 99th Psalm, and we're going to read the whole thing. The Lord reigns. Let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned above the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion, and he is exalted above all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. The strength of the king loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God, and worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests, and Samuel was among those who called on his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them in the pillar of the cloud. They kept his testimonies and the statute that he gave to them. O Lord our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, and yet an avenger of their evil deeds. Exalt the Lord our God, and worship at his holy hill, for holy is the Lord our God. One of the reasons that I preface that by saying, remember, this is a song of praise to God, is that it's a little bit foreign to us, not because it's a theologically incorrect idea, but because we're just not accustomed to hearing it as often, to think of God being an avenger as a good thing. You see, when you're looking at Jewish culture and the way that the Jews who would have understood these psalms in their day looked at it, you see them often crying out for justice. You see them often crying out for God to come and set things right. You don't see that as much from Christians. And I think it's because Jesus really changed that emphasis and put the emphasis on setting them right in me. In other words, your struggle is not so much against society, and it's not so much against the world as it is internally. And I think that there's some reasons for that. First of all, the New Testament is the law of the heart. The Old Testament is a law for a nation. And obviously a nation has far more to do with the dealings of the world. They have far more to do with the ins and outs and, and the goings-on of this planet. If it's an internal struggle, you're certainly aware of that stuff but you're really only paying attention to it as it pertains to your spiritual well-being. That was a transition that Jesus Christ coming down to earth made, and I think it's an appropriate one. But I think it's important to understand that the Jews were praising God for his vengeance and wrath, which is something that seems a little odd to a modern Christian, but it's something that is wholly appropriate. They loved God's justice and should have. And actually, in that very psalm, you see a reason for that. It was not that they were blind. It's not that they believed, oh, well, I really want God to come down and bring some justice here because he's going to bring it to those people over there. No, that's not what the psalmist said at all. In fact, if you look back and we'll look at the last verses here, look at what he said about some of the people that served God. Moses and Aaron were among his priests, and Samuel was among those who called on his name. And then you skip down there, and it says, uh, Yet the Lord gave uh, was an avenger of their evil deeds, there in verse 8. So these were not people that were blinded, or believed that God was just going to bring justice to those bad people over there, and he's going to protect me. The psalmist is saying, No, God brings justice to everybody that does wrong. God is not a respecter of person. Even if we're looking at people like the prophet Samuel, or Moses, or Aaron, when they did something wrong, God punished them for it. 
And they were better people because of that. You see, God's punishment is viewed as a blessing in and of itself, and should be. God's correction should be something that we want to happen to us. Sure, we don't like it in the process, just like if you're looking back at your own childhood, you didn't like getting a whooping, or you didn't like having your favorite toy taken away, or you didn't like being grounded. But ultimately, you're glad that it happened because it made you into the person that you are today, and it instilled discipline and morality into you. Believe me, I've talked to people that don't have a great home life, and that didn't when they were children and didn't really get punished as kids because their parents didn't care enough about them to do that, and they wish that they had that in their life. God's punishment is something that we should strive for. It's something that we should desire God to give to us because it is a show of His affection. That He is concerned enough about us, about our physical, mental, and spiritual well-being, as well as the decisions that we make, that He wants to correct those errors so that we can be better suited to serve Him. He did it with people like Moses and Aaron. He did it with people like Abraham. He did it with people all throughout the New and Old Testament. And it's something that we should view as something we desire for him to do to us. It's a correction that we should welcome so that we can be better suited to serve him as his children. Stay the course, friends. Now, I know you're here because you're interested in information on what's going on in the state of Alabama and around the world, and you've come to the right place for that. But it's YouTube, so you could also just be here because you're bored. If you want me to keep making videos to keep you occupied, you need to go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to playing Minesweeper.